Kile kweli shumu Paita ndetevu maga mnange Ama paita mbikile kweli shumu Paita ndetevu maga mnange Ama paita mbikile kweli shumu Paita ndetevu maga mnange Ama paita mbikile kweli shumu Paita ndetevu maga mnange Of the leadership. I'll start on my extreme far left is the Treasurer General of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Commissar Mpile Maotwe. Immediately next to her, on her right, is the National Chairperson of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Commissar Veronica Mente. On my extreme right, the far end of the table, is the Deputy Secretary General of the EFF, Commissar Popi Mailula, and immediately next to her, on her left, the Secretary General of the Economic Freedom Fighters, Commissar Marshal Jamini. On my immediate left, is the Deputy President, Commissar Nico Floyd Shivambo of the Economic Freedom Fighters. And of course, on my right, who will be taking us through today in our press conference, is the Commander in Chief and President of the EFF, uh, President Julius Malema. Over to you, President. Thank you very much. Uh, our spokesperson is now Tambo and the officials of the Economic Freedom Fighters, members of the media, and the people of South Africa, Africa, and the diaspora. The Economic Freedom Fighters send its compliments to the people of South Africa and affirm that the economic emancipation movement is still intact and ready to lead South Africa after the 2024 elections. We welcome all the people of South Africa to the year of economic freedom, the year of the revolution, and the year of monumental change in the political landscape of South Africa. We take this opportunity to convey our sincere gratitude to all EFF ground forces and the people of South Africa who partook in all the programs of the EFF to celebrate and mark our turn years of existence. The 10th anniversary programs and activities of the EFF, including the legacy programs and projects, were carried out with optimal and utmost excellence. The EFF demonstrated beyond any doubt that we are a solid and sound organization with optimal capacity to organize and carry out our programs successfully. That is what we will continue to do even when we are the government of the province of all provinces, KwaZulu Natal, and of South Africa from this year onwards. We also take this moment to welcome the South African government's decision to file an application before the International Court of Justice against apartheid Israel. We stand in full support of this decisive action, reflecting our unwavering commitment to global justice and human rights. Furthermore, we strongly call on the government to follow through with the National Assembly's motion introduced by the EFF to close the Israel Embassy in South Africa. This move is a critical step towards holding accountable those who have long disregarded international laws and human rights standards. We take this opportunity to report to the people of South Africa that the targets we set ourselves in preparations for the 2024 general elections are all fully met. When we established our election machinery in August 2023, we set ourselves the target of establishing branch election task forces in all of South Africa's 4,368 wards. We are happy to report that as of the 2nd of January 2024, all the 4,368 wards have functional BETFs which makes it 67,020 members of BTFs who are leading election machinery at what level. When we established the election machinery in August 2023, we set ourselves a target of establishing voting district election task forces 
in all of South Africa's 23,296 voting districts. We are happy to report that the EFF has functional and verified voting districts election task forces in all the 23,296 voting districts. We can boldly confirm that as of the 2nd of January 2024, the EFF has verified and audited 481,649 ground forces who are volunteers in all the voting districts. What this means is that the Economic Freedom Fighters has a total of 548 and 669 volunteers and ground forces who will be campaigning for the EFF for the purpose of elections victory in 2024. We call, we call on the young people of South Africa and all the remaining members of the EFF to join in as volunteers and organizers for elections victory in 2024. A clarion call is that every young person must be a volunteer an organizer for election victory in 2024. Young people are called upon to join the Battalion of Economic Freedom Fighters, volunteers, and organizers. The 2024 elections will be a turning point in the history of South Africa's politics, and we as the EFF will be at the center of that monumental change. We know that the right-wing forces which are funded and coordinated by the white capitalist establishment and foreign countries are hard at work to prevent the EFF from ascending to political power in 2024. We want to assure the people of South Africa, the African continent and the progressive world that the EFF will ascend to government in South Africa after the national and provincial elections. Despite the many commitments and lies told by the sitting government, load shedding is still a reality and this is what it does. Students just wrote their metric in the dark only to be allowed to spend the rest of December with electricity. There are factories that have closed down, leaving hundreds without jobs. Companies are incurring additional costs in security and backup electricity because of load shedding. The healthcare system is crippled with hospitals struggling to maintain critical life-saving equipment in an operational state during power outages. It is true that load shedding is killing people. Small businesses, the backbone of our economy, are suffocating under the pressure of interrupted operations, leading to losses, losses in revenue and potential closures. Students at institutions of higher learning are suffering because of inconsistent power supply. Lastly, the tourism sector, which is a vital, which is vital for our nations income and global reputation is tarnished as visitors face the grim reality of a country unable to provide basic utility services. These are the damages of load shedding that they are trying to cover with lies. The country is facing an unemployment crisis that is now a matter of national security. As people return to their places of work after holidays, there are more than 11.7 11, 11 million people who are willing, able, and ready to make a living for themselves but are excluded from the economy. These are unemployed, dejected, and forgotten people who should be contributing meaningfully to the economy to feed their families. What is even more scary is that we have more than 70% of people between the age of 15 and 34 years of age who cannot find employment, being forced into a life of crime and illegal substance abuse. These are young people condemned to a hell of unemployment. As Sir Ramaphosa made it clear that it is not the intention or obligation of the ANC government to create jobs. Our people continue to live in spaceless townships and informal settlements in squalor without clean water and flushing toilets. When we revived the cry for land, for land to build houses, build schools, churches, factories, and farms, this cry was once more hijacked. We tabled a motion for Parliament to start a process to amend 
Section 25 of the Constitution to allow for expropriation of land without compensation into the custody of the state. That process was hijacked. Despite hundreds of submissions that made a concrete call for expropriation of all land without compensation, whites continued to own 72% of total farms and agricultural land, while black Africans only own 4% of the land. This is the reason why they don't want to amend the Constitution. The South African police services has completely collapsed, leaving our people on their own. There is nothing between them and criminals. In the last calendar year, more than 27,494 people were murdered. This figure increased by more than 2,000 murders compared to the previous year. Already in the first and the second quarter of the current year, more than 13,000 people have already been murdered. These numbers are higher than those in some declared civil war zones. The number of sexual offenses, number of attempted murder, the number of assaults, common assaults, robbery, and contact crimes have gone up in the last quarter. In the last quarterly report, which covers the period of July and September 2023, there were 6,945 murders. There were 3,733 kidnappings and 10,516 cases of rape were reported. This is all in three months. Women and girl children are continuously found raped and killed in a brutal manner in our communities while nothing is being done to ensure perpetrators suffer harshly for their crimes. Criminals are now even robbing police stations and the police are working with drug dealers and politicians. Our roads are in a complete state of disaster. Portals cost millions of rents due to damages. Hundreds of our people are dying on these roads. They are avoidable death. Hospitals are dilapidated and many of them are in a state of complete disaster. Municipal buildings are an embarrassment. It is as if there are no adults who work there. There is just a general decay and dilapidation of social and economic infrastructure everywhere you go. Water infrastructure is dilapidated. We lose billions of water in leaks while our people do not have clean, dependable and drinkable water and must share water with animals. There is no practical and believable plan to address the water crisis in South Africa. While the infrastructure continues to collapse, the National Treasury continues to propose and implement budget cuts with every opportunity. Many of our communities are still without water, despite numerical and superficial statistics presented on the access to water South Africa faces a huge crisis of water provision and access. Water is important for human life and water is important for everything we do on a daily basis. We therefore take this opportunity as economic freedom fighters to resonate the voices of waterless communities, districts, municipalities, townships, informal settlements and villages. We do so because everywhere we go, our people are complaining about access to water and they, are correctly, and they correctly say that their voices are not heard and resonated in Parliament despite the fact that this institution is supposed to express the interest of our people. We are here to resonate the cries of the people of Umtlaboya Lingan, of Josini, Mutubatuba, and Big Five Tlabisa in Mkanyakude do not have water despite the huge Josini Dam which both the ANC and IFP governments are falling, are failing to reticulate water from. We know that all the 61 wards of Mzinyati districts, Umsinga, Ngoutu, Endumain and Umvoti have a huge crisis of water and there is no solution if those who are government in those municipalities remain in power. Much of the problems we are confronted with is because of the incapable state that has completely collapsed, especially at local government. The majority of municipalities have collapsed and cannot, even, cannot do even the most basic things. 
Many of the municipalities cannot fix sewer spillage, cannot collect refuse, cannot cut grass, cannot fix, fix potholes, and all they remain is to pay for salaries. We have young, recently graduated doctors and teachers who were funded by the very same state, but today they are told that there are no teaching jobs and there is no money to pay for doctors when they are in, when there are hospitals and clinics who do not have doctors today. Our nation is in a crisis and must be rescued as a matter of agency. As they await their results, the EFF wish all matriculants well following the 2023 examination cycle. We call on all communities to celebrate those who have done well and encourage those who may not perform, who may not perform at desired level to improve their results and never stop pursuing education. A negative outcome in metric result is not a death sentence, but an opportunity to further emphasize the importance of applying yourself when it comes to education. We call on all matriculants to pursue post-metric qualifications at university, at universities of technology and TVET colleges in order to better themselves and equip themselves to make a contribution in South Africa's future. The EFF Student Command will once again embark on the Sizofunda Ngenkani campaign and ensure that across all institutions of higher learning, no student is denied access to education due to lack of aff affordability. We take this opportunity to send our condolences to the President of the EFF Student Command, Commissar Sitrelonzi, who was befallen by a tragedy this festive season that has seen four members of his family die after a car accident and one still in hospital in a critical condition. This tragedy that has befallen our young leader, this tragedy that has befallen our young leader of our organization who has committed himself to the struggle of the youth requires all of us to rally behind him and we encourage all leaders, particularly those in the Western Cape, to show him our support. As the EFF Student Command embarks on the Zofunda Ngenkani campaign, the dire state of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NSFAS, demands a radical youth that will fight tirelessly for the doors of learning to be opened for all. As things stand, NSFAS is crippled by a 13 billion budget cut by Treasury, confirming once again that the ANC government sees no value in education. Further to this, the EFF is affirmed in our long-held view that at the center of the collapse of higher education sector is Bladen Zimande, who has now been exposed through leaked voice recordings for having secret meetings with service providers who have allegedly donated more than one million to the SACP during his tenure as the General Secretary. Nzimande has been anti-students ever since he was placed in that department for factional reasons and has established it as his personal wallet which he uses to practice patronage, patronage and enrich himself and his friends. Blend Nzimande must resign and he must resign now. We as the EFF want to assure the people of South Africa that we are here to rescue South Africa from high levels of incompetency, directionlessness, and incapability of the sitting government. The 30 years of the ANC's rule has proven beyond any doubt that the former liberation has no ideological, political, moral, and technical capacity to rescue South Africa from perpetual decline and decay. We remain as the only organization that in our 10 years of existence have demonstrated through commitment to finding permanent solutions to the crisis confronting our country. As a result, we call on Sir Ramaphosa to immediately announce the election date for the 2024 national and provincial elections as there is no logical or reasonable excuse to prolong this announcement any longer. Ramaphosa must accept that his term that has been defined by failure has come to an end and give the nation a firm election date so it can prepare itself 
for a future that does not include him. On the 3rd and the 4th of February 2024, the Independent Electoral Commission, IEC, will hold its second voter registration weekend and the EFF encourages all unregistered South Africans to register to vote and for those who have voted before to check if they, are, they still appear on the voters' roll. The 2024 elections represent a massive opportunity for change and the upliftment of the lives of South Africans and to not be registered to vote is tantamount to a betrayal of one's duty as a, as a citizen. The youth must rise to the challenge and prove all those who say they are not interested in politics wrong by coming out and register to vote just like they did in the first voter registration weekend. The option to register online remains open until the proclamation of the election date is made. So voter registration is in fact open every day. All South Africans are encouraged to visit the IEC website check their voting status, and for those who are not registered, you can register to vote online. We will, on the 10th of February 2024, unveil a detailed ready to govern program, which is our manifesto for the 2024 elections. Like all our previous manifestos, our 2024 manifesto is not a document of promises, but real and realizable commitments. We do not make empty promises in the EFF. We make solid, sound, and scientifically proven and based commitments. That's who we are and that's what we represent. We will reveal on the 10th of February that we are the only organization that has a tangible plan to end load shedding and bring back stability of electricity supply in South Africa. We are the only organization that will reveal the fact that we will prioritize water provision to all our communities. We are the only organization with a concrete plan for land redistribution to all our people. We are the only organization that will bring jobs to our people. We are the, we are the organization that will bring free quality education, health care, and sanitation for all. We therefore take this opportunity to invite all the people of KwaZulu Natal to come and attend the launch of our manifesto. The People's Manifesto on the 10th of February 2024 here at the Moses Mabida Stadium. All what's in the province of KwaZulu-Natal and all the voting districts here in Eteguini will be provided with safe and reliable transport to attend the rally. We can confirm today that we are already, we already have received more numbers that have confirmed that they will indeed attend the rally on the 10th of February. EFF programs, as demonstrated in the 2023 10th anniversary program and activities, are always solid and sound programs, and everyone who attend will have attended a solid and historical political education event. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President. We will now open the floor for the first round of questions. So there will be two rounds. So we'll, let's do the first round. We'll take five hands. You'll be number one. Is there number two? Number two. Is there number three? Number three. Is there number four? Let's take those three hands for now and then proceed. Number one. Please state your name and media house. Sure. Uh, greetings to the leadership, compliments of the season. It's Mtlantla Mabasa from Eyewitness News. The first question, CIC, um, and I'm asking this because KZN used to be a no-go province for the EFF, but I think things changed before and after the 2021 polls. Looking at this year's provincial and national elections, how are the grounds for the EFF in the province, given also um, some of the things that have happened between the party and, you know, parting ways with other parties and, and, and what's not. Um, the second one, maybe this one should go to the DPDP. We've noticed you're now a permanent resident here in the province, of course, working for your organization. Looking at the Department of Infrastructure in Etewini that you are heading, what are some of the successes that 
your MMC has been able to deliver, but what are some of the challenges facing the department headed by your party, if any? Thank you. That will be all for now. Thank you very much. Number two. Uh, um, good afternoon, everybody, and good afternoon to the leadership of the EFF. Um, I am Kosi Zulu of Silex Africa TV. Uh, just wish um, compliments of the season, uh, hopefully. Um, well, one, I want to just compliment the EFF leadership, more especially under Etsekuni uh, municipality, um, for the basically the progress that I've um, done according to the infrastructure development we have seen and observed the beaches um, which we pride ourselves with in, uh, in Durban. But um, one concern or basically um, issue that I want to find out from the leadership of the EFF is obviously covering a lot of other political organizations. They've always uh, pushed or presented the MPC, which is a multi-party charter. I just want to find out if, because um, the AFF is excluded on that multi-party charter, I just want to find out if um, ever after the elections, provincial and national, will they be able to perhaps negotiate coalition government, whatever the results may be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three at the back. Let's get the mic to him as well. from SABC News. Uh, we know that um, Mr. Malema, you have a good relationship with former President Jacob Zuma. What are your sentiments about former President Zuma's stance of rallying behind the MK party? Thank you very much. President. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we are looking very good in uh, KZN in terms of uh, the potential to take over this province. Um, all the research shows that the ANC will not get anything beyond 25% in Guazul Natan. And um, therefore, uh, to talk about the ANC as a party that will be governing KZN uh, will be actually uh, be a denial. Uh, so we must start accepting that the ANC is gone in KZN. Um, apart from uh, whatever that the EFF is doing, the ANC is just self-destructive um, and is led by a very childish leadership um, in, in KZN. Um, if you listen to the chairperson and the secretary speaking, it's like you are um, in a shebeen listening to people debating politics. Nothing ideologically sound, no clear direction of where they want to take this province. And when we took over the infrastructure department, we found it in a disaster. And um, in less than a year, we've tried everything possible to ensure that we deliver the services to our people. And every infrastructural challenge that we come across here in Eteguini, we don't avoid it. We confront it head on and try to resolve it. The, the swimming pools don't belong to the EFF uh, MMC, but we were able to fight for swimming pools to be uh, completed and make sure that by the time the festive season comes, our people are able to utilize those swimming pools. Yes, our infrastructure, some of it goes into the beaches. Tried everything to make sure that the beaches are available and clean for our people to utilize them. So, and the kind of the response we find from the MMC of infrastructure 
is the kind of a response we should find from all councillors and civil servants who respond to the call of duty, you know, with positive mind and not looking at it as if it's a punishment, that a breach has fallen, that sewer spillage is being experienced in Guamashu. You don't say, no, 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 call the uh, uh, call free number. and No, the councillors themselves stand up to go there and ensure that those matters are attended to. It's the same style everywhere else where the EFF is in government. You go to Ikurleni, you experience the same thing. You go to Johannesburg, you experience the same thing. You go to Nelson Mandela, experience the same thing. So we, we are a people's government. We are driven by the uh, service delivery and the demands of our people. I don't know what is multi-party charter. Is that thing of the DA and them, multi-party charter? Oh, the, the, the Oppenheimer party. Yeah. So we, 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 not, we have nothing to do with Oppenheimers. We have nothing to do with Oppenheimers. You know there is a party here called RISE, uh, um, 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 with posters everywhere. Um, um, you guys must ask those guys who's finding them, because we've got it on good authority that they are foreign funded. It's a foreign country that gives them money. So there is a, a, a country that is forming a party in our country to undermine our sovereignty. You ask everybody about the money, about everything. You never ask Rise, South Africa, where they get the money from. Where do they get the money from? I mean, a person just comes from being a failed editor of a newspaper. And then he forms a party, and the next thing is every corner, including in Guiani. That's a problem. It's a big problem, which the media is not paying attention to. So, those things of posters are very expensive, yeah. DP. Can I wait to give one poster TG? It's 45 rand Corex board. Yeah, Corex board is 45 rand. Yes. So, to print 1 million will mean how many? 45 million, 1 million Corex boards. So we just have to ask that guy of Rise Africa, how many boards have you printed? Then you'll have an idea how much this guy has spent. So we go to FNB, we have a rally, we do all of that. Then there is a noise about where do they get the money from and all of that. And we tell you, the IEC by mistake, it was bailing the ANC out. <laughs> then it gave us money. I see, how much? 30, 37 million. Gave us 37 million. What's about? The money just came, man. <laughs> Unexpectedly. Hey, we pulled a beautiful show with their money. And then they go around asking, where did they get the money? But they gave us the money. They thought they were giving the ANC a bailout. They gave us the money, then they said that's the money for elections in July. Now we're going to elections now in May. They don't give us money. So you can see the money was not for elections. It was a money to bail out the new leadership of the ANC that was elected in December, which came into an organization with a debt and then went to mobilize the Minister of Finance to make some allocation so that the ANC can be bailed out. That's where the question that was actually raised as to how did Gwen resolve the problem of salaries of the ANC in less than a year when it took Paul Mashatile five years to resolve salaries? It was that, imagine if the EFF got 37 million how much did the ANC get? And then she used that money to resolve the crisis of salaries in the ANC. So she has no capacity. Don't, it's not about capacity. It's about conspiring to use the state resources to rescue the collapsing, failing ruling party. Uh, President Zuma has got a right to vote for any party he wishes to vote for. And uh, 
we can interfere with his right. If he had said he's going to vote for the EFF, would have been a very serious boost for us. We'll be very happy. So now he decided to go and vote for non-existing things. And that is not going to help us in the process of displacing the ANC. President Zuma is in denial. And that is, of course, veterans of the ANC are like that. They are in denial that the ANC is dead. President Zuma says, I know I can rescue it this way. There is no rescuing it here. He will just kill himself with a heart attack because those people are not in a position to be rescued by anyone, including President Mandela. If President Mandela was to awaken from his grave, he will not rescue these people. He can do whatever he wants to do, including Madiba Meiji. They are at a point where the ANC is not going to be rescued by anyone. So, President Zuma is just, you know, trying that maybe something can come out and all of that. But really, there's nothing that is going to come out. Um, um, and therefore, we have nothing to do with MK. MK has got a right to exist. Our constitution is there. We don't have anything to do with them. And um, we don't expect any one of the EFF to take part in the activities of MK. Our constitution is very clear that no one will go and campaign or support other political parties. That is defining yourself outside the organization and therefore you have expelled yourself. No one will expel you. We are not going to do that thing that the ANC is doing with President Zuma. He says, I remain an ANC member but I'm going to vote for MK, try that with the EFF. <laughs> try it. Let's see what's going to happen. It will never happen. We have one party. You, you are a member, you are a supporter, you are a ground force, you are a voter of that party. You can't be half-half. No, you can't be half-half. So, let's make that very clear. We wish President Zuma well and uh, we hope that something will come out of this but with my experience of having formed a political party alongside Floyd and them it's not an easy thing it's a, if you were to ask me to do it again I won't do it actually I'm much better looking after cattle than to form another political party so we are still to see the leadership of MK. Um, uh, what is that thing? Action SA. It has never gone to conference. Never, ever gone to conference. No one says anything about that. Mapantiti, Mapantiti, Gaten and them. They've never gone to the conference. And no one says anything about them. Rise, Muzans, has never gone to a conference. No one says anything about it. EFF is going to its third National People's Assembly this year in December. It's going to take place this year. This will be the third in 10 years. But we are still not a suitable party. We are a party of a dictator. We are a party of a working here, Greg. Cult. We are a party of a cult. But all of these fools who have never gone to conference to test their democracy, their internal democracy, are not called cult, are not called dictators, are not called all sorts of names. Every target you have put for the EFF has been met. We are the most corrupt organization in the eyes of all our enemies. We have been in government in serious municipalities on serious positions. Not a single case of corruption. No MMC of the EFF can be accused of any wrongdoing. Because we mean it when we say we do not want corruption. 
all of that uh, it cannot be heard by the South African media. Um, uh, so look at how we have executed, for instance, the 2023 political program of action of the EFF. And look at all those events and all those programs that we initiated for orphanages and for communities and how we executed our rally and how we executed everything we put before us. It was done exceptionally well. You can't fault a EFF on any of the things that they said they will do. And if you are thinking, how is the EFF government going to look like? Just look at how EFF executes its programs. Then you'll have an appreciation that this is a well-oiled machinery focused on what they've made commitment to. So when we launch our manifesto on the 10th of February, we're not launching a Bible of promises. We're launching commitment. Commitments that are clear with a target, with a date, and what we seek to achieve. So no one can do that type of a manifesto. The ANC is waiting for the EFF before it launches its manifesto. During the year of elections, the ANC launches manifesto during January 8 statement. The January 8 statement is the manifesto of the ANC during the year of elections. They can't do it now. They are waiting for the lead of society, the EFF, to come first so that they can write a manifesto to counter that. That's how childish they are. They are waiting for us, the real ruling party of South Africa, to come to Moses Mabida and say, this is what we are going to do. They are going to copy everything. You know that's what we do. We lead them. We lead this country. They, there is no one of political parties who does anything without the mention of the EFF, as if we are a ruling party. No one. ANC opens his mouth, EFF. DA opens his mouth, EFF. Action SA, EFF. Because we are a leader of society. We are not complaining. Let them say more. Children are talking about their father. They are crying to their father. Let them cry. We will resolve their problems because we are the only party with the solution. So, 10th of February, we are coming to present solutions to the challenges confronting South Africa. DP? No, thanks, President. I, I thought we had uh, covered the issues in terms of human settlement and infrastructure, but just to highlight something that in context would be very important, that when we took the responsibility of human settlement and infrastructure portfolio as chair in Etagwena municipality, we had to deal with the backlog of the So when the EFF took the responsibility of human settlement and infrastructure in a Tequini municipality, we had to deal with the backlog of the massive infrastructure damages that were caused by the 2021 floods. And at the center of those damages was the damages on the water pumps and the wastewater treatment plants. So the political focus which the EFF has been focusing on is to revive the water provision systems in all the areas, whilst making sure that the areas which have got water shortages continue to receive water, sometimes even through immediate interventions of water tanks in Duzuma, in parts of Umlazi and part of Kwamashu as well. But the most important thing that we then got to focus on was the maintenance of 
and the repairs of the wastewater treatment plants. We've got 36 wastewater treatment plants here in Itequin, which if are not maintained properly, we have raw sewerage that goes into the ocean and therefore affects the oceans and then leads to the closure of the beaches. Side that we, we then suffer in terms of tourism. But we can report now, President, that for the 2023 festive season of the 23 swimming beaches of Etiquini, 20 were open. And the ones that were not open is Unstay, is Warmna Beach, and Vehicle Spray, which historically have had problems because of uh, the infrastructure backlogs there. But the rest of the 20 beaches were opened and were available for tourism. And that is at the center of Etequini's economy because we thrive through tourism, particularly from inland travelers who come to the beaches during the festive season. So the EFF was able to make sure and have political focus and emphasis on the wastewater treatment plants to prevent raw sewerage from going into the oceans, but also to repair the water systems, particularly the water pumps that were damaged during the floods. And of course, there's a lot of things that we are emphasizing on uh, that we should uh, be, 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 be looking into. It. We have to look after the informal settlements through alternate sanitation, but also constant supply of water. And that we have been dealing with almost perfectly. And, and this happens against the crisis that we found in the department. And there's a, a, a huge scale of improvements which the EFF will be making in the city of Ekurlene. But we're on track in managing the entire portfolio, inclusive of the human settlement division, water, sanitation, the engineering component of repairs of the bridges and roads that were damaged by the floods in terms of what happens. And we, we were very firm in holding everyone accountable who is given the responsibility in the city of Etiquin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President and uh, TP. We'll take the last and final round of hands for those who still have something to say. You'll be number one, you'll be number two, you will be number three. I noted that hand. You will be number four. You will be number four. Uh, going, going, gone. Number one. When to uh, greetings to you all. My name is Begin Giovanna from Milanga Newspaper. Um, could you perhaps uh, tell us about the decision to um, uh, hold this um, uh, event uh, in KZN? Uh, are there any specific reasons uh, that made you to decide that uh, this province is uh, suitable to, um, um, you know, um, hold this event. And also, I want to check, after that uh, um, speech by Ngiz Wen Kuhn, um, we've noticed that uh, he, he apologized. Um, how are you feeling about that uh, apology that he made? Thank you. Number two. Good day. Ikamu Menele Swawandwando from Ikakasi FM. Uh, I have two questions. So the first one, uh, I would like to know from the leadership of the EFF in terms of the, the process or the procedure when it comes to the candidate list. Uh, can you please share the uh, process? I'm asking this question because one will say, I host a show in Kakas where Abala Lili will fall on the show. They say, why you have this former, uh, no, this prominent member is now in parliament, in terms of the process of making sure that uh, the fighters on the ground or the, the ground forces they have a say in, in, in the candidate list who are going to the seventh general election. I'm a fighter as an IP voice in terms of the candidate list. Then the second question will be, did the EFF pay for using this uh, facility, Moses Mapeda, for the 10th of February? Because there is a norm 
here in KZN that if you have or you're part of government, uh, you'll just use uh, the, part, the facilities of the municipality or something. Did the EFF pay? And if maybe they can share those invoices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number three. Uh, the, I'm going to question the CIC with regards to some of the pandemics that are still facing the province. And one of them is the killing of traditional leadership. I've noticed how your party is uh, very fond of traditional leaders. This seems to be a growing trend in the province. Each and every year you'd have uh, uh, traditional, uh, traditional leaders being killed. And they are all killed in the same manner. It's either they are shot when arriving at their home or when driving somewhere. And the Department of Cooperative Governance, as is, the only thing that they've said they'll be able to do is to you know, have those upgraded gates, to have uh, more lights at the House of Traditional Leaderships and, and Wi-Fi. But the traditional leadership have been raising concerns about having protectors instead. Do you think this is a genuine call? What do you think should be done? And lastly, there is an interministerial task team or committee that was established by President Cyril Ramaphosa in 2018. Its task was to look at the killing of political uh, leaders. Um, one of the prosecutors serving in that um, team has raised concerns saying that one of the issues why these court cases are delaying is because there are no special courts. And is also the lead prosecutor in the trial of Cindy Somagat, who was also a best friend, which is also seeing delays each and every year. And uh, last year, late last year, Cindy Somagat's mother was also attacked in her home. I'm not sure if the leadership is aware. Held at gunpoint. She says people peruse through the things at her home asking questions, and they told them that they will be back. This is according to Ulwaz Makata, the brother of Cindy's. It seems this keeps on going on, this thing of threatening politicians and their families. In your best opinion, CIC, what do you think should be done? We saw in 2019 the EFF led a very big match uh, against the, the killing of politicians, but shortly after that, it seems this thing is on the rise again. What should be done in your best opinion? Thank you. Thank you very much, number four. Um, thanks very much once again. Um, I appreciated the response from the CIC um, regarding my first question. Um, maybe on the last one, um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the response and even with the reiteration of the DP, uh, I'm quite grateful of how we narrated the effect into, um, about how they've actually taken the infrastructure uh, through the progress. Um, I know we've had our president around uh, the president, if I say that our president, I mean of the country, obviously, uh, who was going around, um, you know, calculating the gradient and the EFF was, you know, very swift at that. So um, the next is diving into the CIC's calculations or proclamations of the ANC not um, exceeding the 25%. Then we have these uh, Rupert things, you know, the MPCs also estimating themselves at 36%. So if I do my maths, I, it is visible that we perhaps, as the EFF, um, are requiring 39%, or well, at least 40 to actually have an outright win of the elections in KZN, which will give us um, an outright rule, even though we don't still reach the 51%. Now, my question is, how certain and confident are we that we are getting to that 40%? Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you very much. Um, well, KZN is very strategic because it's in the top three of the uh, the highest uh, voter population. So if you want to upset the national trends, you have to cause damage in Gauteng, KZN, and the Western Cape and make sure the ANC doesn't get 
anything beyond 60% anywhere in South Africa after put, dropping them below 50% in the three provinces. So I think it's a, an admitted fact that in Gauteng, they don't, they don't even take chances. They know that it's gone. And then they will not regain the Western Cape. If anything, the DA is going to lose the Western Cape. Then the ANC will lose KZN and get less than 60% in majority of the provinces. Some even at 51, 49, and all of them. Then that drops their national outcome. So you can't do that. You can't achieve the removing of the ANC from government without having a plan with KZN. And you know, the people of KZN, they shocked us in 20, 2019 on the national election. The outcome we got here, we never expected. And that was a call in a way for the people of KZN to say we are longing for the EFF, we want the EFF, but the EFF is nowhere to be found. So we're here now. We didn't just come, we were invited in 2019, they invited us. 350,000 votes unexpected. Sit challenge. I figure my vote. So how do you get 350,000 votes without doing serious work and not go back there where there is potential? So we're here now, and uh, it's going to be very difficult uh, for the ruling party and for the IFP. Um, um, so the second question is, in Gizwe Mkunu, I don't know the guy. The first time I met that guy is there by the by the students. June 16. June 16, yeah, something June. And I, he was brought by SG to me. I'm like, what is this one doing now on the stage? <laughs> they say he's an artist or something. I said, oh, let me just be polite. So I really don't care what he thinks of me. Is a is a is the smallest boy ever. I know talented artists, and I know one when I see or listen to one. There's no such a thing. So I can entertain such things. That's why I never responded, never said anything. Even when the KZN was going up and down, I was like, "Is it worth it?" Because sometimes. Uh, Anyway, the ground forces have got energy, but sometimes certain things we must just let go. Uh, because when you are a leader, you must expect such things to be said. That, that's how he feels. Um, and then he expressed himself, and then uh, they forced him to apologize. He apologized. So it's not an issue for me. Uh, even if I see him tomorrow, I will embrace him like I do with all other African kids. I have no problem, uh, none whatsoever. There's nothing personal. And support children. Marawe Uzama wrong. So you must try life different, not the way he's doing it, because. Now he tries life, he makes a stupid mistakes. Now a car is gone. Out of being excited and sitting on a toilet seat and say things that you're not supposed to say on, ca on camera. Look at how much that has costed him. I wouldn't have wondered that for an African child, West artist who's trying life, such an opportunity to be taken away from him. But the ground forces and the leadership of KZN felt offended and they acted on it. I, I never interacted with that situation. No one even brought it to my attention. I've not even a journalist has called me to ask me about that because I assume everybody said it's not worth 
uh, giving our attention. Um, candidate list, it will be announced. We are discussing today the manifesto and then the candidate criteria. And uh, that criteria will be uh, published. Uh, uh, and everybody will get to know about it. It will be sent to the structures of the EFF. Um, candidate list is not a difficult thing. We are... Uh, uh, an organization that exists through democratic centralism. So the people who are going to parliament are ground forces of the EFF, are the leadership of the EFF, and professionals who are going to add some particular lacking skill or aspect amongst our collective. The women will have to be there, the youth will have to be there, uh, and demographics must be uh, balanced, um, and that's it. But our members will express themselves. I have not gone through the guidelines who are going to be taken through now, but democratic centralism says the, the views of the lower structures of the EFF ought to be taken into consideration when a final decision is made. So we'll listen to our structures. But ultimately, the central command will come up with a list. Yeah, it's an EFF list. And I don't know, you know, if it was for me, I'm more interested in the leadership of the EFF. EFF. Who leads the EFF as an organization? Because if we have a better organization and better EFF, then we will have better deployments. Because with deployments, it's not a complicated thing. When a person misbehaves or do something wrong, you can recall them. But when you elect wrong leadership into the structures of the EFF, you can't recall them. And it's very painful to disband a democratically elected structure. It's undesirable. So that's where we'll have a lot of debate. But on these ones of... Who goes, who doesn't go, for sure even Carl Niaus is on his way there, Shema, there's no problem. Ah, there shouldn't be a problem. Not yes. in Parliament. I get about as Funabalung. So it is Tole Umlung, not in Parliament. So I, I, we shouldn't uh, um, make the least a big thing, a DP, as if this is what will make or break the EFF. No, what will make and break the EFF is, is third national people's assembly. That's what will break the EFF, not who goes to parliament. Not if it was for me, I wouldn't want to go to parliament. I would want to stay in the party and build the organization. And I refused that even when I was in the ANC. I was offered to go to Parliament as President of the Youth League. I refused that because I wanted to build the Youth League. Uh, we were offered ministerial positions. We refused that because we thought we need to build the Youth League to be a formidable force, which we did. I can tell you now, I agree it takes generation to produce that kind of leadership for the Youth League. It will never happen in our lifetime share. But those Zama, Ba Zama, they will never get it right. So we are more interested in the organization, not in the positions of government and state and all of that. We pay it here. Yeah. And we pay everywhere we go, we pay. We pay. But to, for you to come ask us for receipts, say, say, I try to learn you must respect each other. It's a lady who once opened my wallet and I allowed it. And my wife was very angry with me for doing that. She will never repeat it. And no one ever will repeat that. When we've been kind and nice, we're not kids, we've got children very old children and wives and families. Don't come here and ask us for a seat. For what? 
this is a public institution, this. You can go there. Their books are open. There's nothing wrong with you going there. It's your place. It's your institution, this one. Not this one. Not this one. So we don't go anywhere for free. And we don't ask for free things. Even with artists. When an artist has given us an invoice, we don't ask for discount or anything. When you come to see here in this rally, Every artist that is going to perform here will be paid. We don't do those things. Like, hey, we are government. We're not here. We give you money for Deben Rocks. Therefore, you must come to our rally for free. No. If he got money for Deben Rocks, it means he put a nice proposal. Deservingly, he got the money. He's not coming on that now. He's coming on himself as an artist. You have to pay. We do that everywhere. Um, you know, killings of traditional leadership is the same as killings of political leaders in KZN, and is the same as killing of people. I, I, I really don't know. Maybe one day we need to come together with the religious leaders and traditional leaders and all political parties and just have a cleansing day of this province. Because they kill with ease. They kill with ease. I don't understand what informs that. You know, they killed a, a councillor there in, in uh, Nongoma. The, the old lady, how old was she? 70 something. A lady, 70 something. They shoot her. How do you shoot a 70 year old woman? Why can't you just put a on like we see on TV, on a, on a nose or something? Shoot here. Yeah. The use of a gun is when you are seriously threatened and you like, this only needs a gun. She wouldn't have needed that kind of killing if she has to be killed. But you go and shoot a 70-year-old woman and then you think you are normal. There's really something wrong here. And uh, we need to confront it. Because my problem is that the killers are known. They are even given titles of Inkabi. You see, if you go where Marshall comes from in uh, Mzimkul, ah, Gunzim. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> from Mzimkul. So, they are known. They are, they, the community knows that one is an Inkabi. That one. Uh, and then you have a state that is helpless, a state that cannot protect its own citizens against criminals who declared war on your citizens. The state should not be negotiating those people. I don't want to say I'm disappointed in General Mukwanazi because I still have some confidence in him. I still believe there is something that can come out of him especially for this province. But if I had this 100% confidence when he came in, for sure I'm now sitting at 75%. And what dropped it drastically was the killing of AKA. Because I was like, ah, they killed him in a wrong province. Them, Kwanaz is not going to play with them. Ah, we found the bullet. We found the car. Since we found the gun, we found the car. What must we do with that? That kind of information. Basically, just calls a press conference with a big head to come and tell us he knows the car and the gun. We are not interested in that. We are interested on that boy who pulled a trigger in front of a camera, killing a high-profile person. A high-profile person get killed in front of a camera. The whole world watching till today we have not arrested the, those people. Even if there are people in our corners and all, we must tell them, Rai, my bra, no, this one, uh, yeah, you are going to embarrass all of us. Here. We have to be seen doing something, man. 
We must arrest you and take you to prison. When you are in prison, you are in charge. They can put you in some, uh, you know, two bedroom, give you TV, whatever. If they know, if they know them and they work together, they must just tell him, surrender, my guy, to save our face. These guys are not ashamed of not having arrested a killer of AKA, a killer of DJ somebody who was shot from the front, from the side, and then on top, a person climbs on top of a car and shoots from the top with a rifle. And the state has got nothing to do with that. Till today, we don't know who killed these high profiles. So you are talking about some traditional leader in Umsinga, and you think, oh, it will be resolved. It will never be resolved if they can't resolve this. See, now we are just going to die. Our, now we are even worse. Our doggers are going to disappear. <laughs> I'm telling you. We cannot have a state that is unable to defend its citizens. These guys who kill people should be dropping like flies. They must be identified and there must be a conscious decision that these ones were dropping them. And a message must be sent to them that one move, you are out. We're not going to play with you. You cannot undermine the state to that extent. Where a state, a state is helpless. We are at a point where the state is helpless. You are in case that uh, they even went into a church, Muna. To rob a pastor in front of cameras preaching it can't be this worse 2024 must stop this nonsense just try us try us for five years and see how much you are going to collapse your high walls because there will be peace you will want fresh air to come in you will not be scared will secure the streets and will take each other with criminals toe for toe. A police officer, a soldier should join the force knowing I'm prepared to lay my life in defense of my country and my people. But it's not the same. Here, yeah, the leadership is involved with gangsters. Is involved with Nkabis, is involved with all of that. The state leaders. Why? Because this thing is a problem here. We even did a commission about it. We even put some unit to go and look after these issues of uh, political killings. Why can't we create a special court? to deal specifically with political killings and killings of traditional leaders. If we can do a commission, it means this is a crisis. If we can have a special unit focusing on that, it's a declaration of a crisis. Let there be special court to deal with political killings in KZN, so that when a person kills a person, gets arrested, get tried quickly and sent to prison, to send message back home, that you dare try to kill a person in KZN, you will go to jail within a short space of time. We did that in 2010. Why, why did we feel so special about international people so much that we don't feel special about ourselves to create special courts to deal with our immediate challenges? That's what the EFF will do. Here in KZN, when we take over, the special investigating unit will be set aside to investigate political killings, and the prosecution will be given priority through special courts to attend to these matters as agent as possible. Because it's no longer a joke, the killing of people here in KZN. I mean, if you saw how Magatka was killed till today, now I'm not even sure if those people that are arrested are the correct ones. What I just gave up. I just gave up. Because I, I, I just, something in me just tells me these guys are not willing to solve this problem. 
because they know the perpetrators. That's why. And the perpetrators know more about them than they do about the perpetrators. So they live under a black man. The way they killed Magaka, it was heartless. And Magaka was also a high-profile politician in KZN and nationally. A friend of mine, when he died, Mbalula rushed to the family and said, Malema must not come here and speak. They refused me to go and bury him. I never buried my friend Magaka. Refused by Mbalula. You journalists of KZN, go and listen to the speeches in that Magaka's funeral. Lamola said they are going to open a trust for Magaka's children. Pule Mabe said they are going to open a trust for Magaka's children. All of those children that those people who denied me to come and bury a friend, all of them are doing nothing for those kids. Those kids are on my shoulders. I never took a platform. I never took a speech and said, I'll, I'll look after my gutters. You know, I am doing it genuinely out of my own volition. Because I know Magata would have wanted me to be at his funeral. He would have been at my funeral had I passed on before him. But political opportunism took over, hijacked his funeral, never found the killers, and never followed any of the things they said. So I said to my wife, and it's in my will, this thing. The program who's going to speak is there. Those who are not wanted is there. Even some relatives are there on the list. They must not come. <laughs> and I said to her, it's in the will. No one, no one must take a platform and say, we're going to do one, two, three for Julius Malema's children. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm waking now. I'm waking for my children. They will survive with the little I'm leaving them. No politician must take a platform at my offender and say, we're going to support uh, uh, Malema's wife. That time they want to get into a bed. We're going to support Malema's wife. Amanda. They want to attack. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> hey, hey, we're here to support, like we said in the funeral, wrong. There's no support. Hey, we're going to support Malema's children. Hey, hey, leave my children alone. Why do you wait for me to die before you can support them? Why? And I said to her, if you sit there, someone says, I'm going to support Malema's children, you don't stand up. You must know you sold me out. You must just stand up. Hey, la, po, la, po, la, po, la, po. Ima, 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 ima. Hey, whoa. That must never be said. Don't say that. Please. Because they take a platform here, say all manner of things for hands. When they leave, they even forgot what they said. Urman, that issue of Magatha, which one? Ah, but the speech. The people who said they will look after Magatha's children are still alive. Some are ministers, some are leaders. Mbalula is a secretary general. They went to Magatha's home with Sitez Galala and said, if you allow this guy to come, we are going to remove that tent. But they did a big tent there for them. And then after that, they left with their tents they never returned back to that house. So one day I was in Zimkulu. I went in there to go and check up on the mother of Magat. She was crying like the funeral is today. They abandoned them. So we will never abandon Magat's children because he was a comrade of ours. He was not a member of the EFF. But he was a comrade of ours, even when he was in the ANC. He, we had that brotherhood. And that's why these people about Tsanalebu, Ngizwe, they don't know what we are talking about. They don't know our relationship with this province. They don't know it. That we, we don't have to be Zulus to be leaders of this province. We led this province when we were young. This is our home. 
You know, I was sitting with some Indian business woman, men saying to me, I'm, you know, I'm the one who took the ANC to Nongo. My, he says he did that. And I looked at him and said, I took the ANC to Nongoma when I was very young. The ANC National and the ANC Province released a statement to distance themselves from me and said, we are not part of that Malema. The Youth League said we are going because there cannot be a no-go area. When we went into Nongoma, I was joined behind the buggy by Minister Senzo Mkun, who said, this, we can't leave you here alone. We're coming with you. We were joined by the army. The soldiers came. The IFP tried what they tried. We said, you can't do anything. They threw stones at us. They tried to threaten us. We said, there's nothing like that which is going to happen. That's when the ANC started to break grounds in Nongo through the Youth League. That was led by us. So we've been conversing uh, unconversed grounds in this province for a very long time. It was that comrade who died? Uh, Wandile. Wandile Mkiz. Those are the comrades we're working with here in Gwazul Natal including the former chairperson here of the ANC, um, Mkhun also, the, the, the one who died. John. John, John Mkhun. We worked with John Mkhun. We worked with this Senzo Mkhun. Senzo Mkhun, don't undermine him. Don't look at his tiny body and think, ah, this guy is not... That guy is very brave. Even behind the bag when we're entering Nongom, the kind of things that were on his body... I don't want to talk about them. But it was a man that was prepared to do anything for the ANC to enter Nongo. He's not a very talkative leader and all of that, but very brave, intelligent leader that this province has produced, a dignified someone. So all I'm saying is that we will never, ever give up on this province. It's our province. And we are not visitors here. My favorite holiday destination is Debe, not Cape Town. That water in Cape Town is not nice. So Floyd can go that side. I'm here. <laughs> so, comrades, I think those are the issues. The confidence is at another level about the KZN. We're excited. We're happy to be here. We have arrived today. We're going to leave on the 11th of February. So whatever we're doing nationally will be coming from here to wherever we're going and coming back here. So Bache, I turned about turned score not much. And this stadium will be full to capacity. I can tell you that now. We're not we're not a, a, a Mickey Mouse organization. They will be saying uh, we brought a uh, uh, foreigners and Nigerians and what what because every time we defeat them they say we brought foreigners so I don't know if we've got 56,000 foreigners who are going to fill up this stadium this stadium is going to be filled up by our people uh, by EFF people who will not enter a bus if they are not registered to vote who will not enter this stadium if they are not registered to vote. We have no business with people who are not registered to vote. Even Zofunda Nginkani, every child who is going to come to the EFF student command table to ask for an assistance, you must first present your ID number to check if you are registered to vote. We register you first to vote. If you are not registered to vote, then we help you to enter the university. A lot of students are not registered. When we were campaigning now in PE, Nelson Mandela University, the EFF got eight, more than 8,000 votes during SRC elections. But in 2021, EFF got uh, 
200 votes, local government elections. In the same what way, the university gives us 8,000. When we went to check, they are not registered to vote, those kids. And then they turn up on the day of voting because of excitement and say, no, want to vote, they turn them back because they are not registered to vote. And then when we pick that up, immediately we declared war on that university. That weekend of registration, we took a lot of, thousands of them to go and register to vote. And then we found a DA counselor who, who made him, a white guy who made himself an indun of that place. He said, where are these people from? I know everybody has said, hey, when these kids are, belong to that school and they reside in these places, they are going to register here. So we're going to have a targeted approach on universities, Tibet colleges. We must get all of those students out to vote. We must get the youth out to vote. The rally that we're bringing here is no ordinary rally. It's a rally of the elections. We are here to campaign. And anyone who's joining us must be in the mood of campaigning. We do so peacefully without provoking other political parties. We want peaceful elections. Because the IFP and the ANC thrive through violence. If you do violence, you'll make them win. We don't thrive through violence. We thrive through superior logic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commander-in-Chief and President of the EFF. That concludes the press conference of the Economic Freedom Fighters. Uh, thank you very much, President.